guys, I am in Florida at an aquarium today and I had a great idea for another polymer clay project. Can you see the seahorses behind me? They're all inside of this tank and I want to make a seahorse with you today. So get your clay and let's get started. Okay, so before you get started, you're going to want to get a few tools so that you can complete our seahorse project. So I have a little sample right here of what we're going to make. Isn't that so cute? Um, so I just picked a couple colors of polymer clay. So I got orange and red, and those I'm going to mix for the body. And then I got white for the eye, and the purple I'll use for the center of the eye, some spots, and we'll see what I do for the fin. So you can really get as many colors as you want, but make sure that you have one or two that you know you want for the main body, an eye color and an accent color. Um, and then I got something to cut clay with. I got a little eye hook just in case you want to turn your seahorse into a pendant or something that can hang. If you do want to use the eye hook, a little bit of glue is helpful after you get it fired. Um, and I'll link this glue in the comments below. Um, a toothpick is very helpful. And then this is just another little clay knife that's great for texture. So grab your tools and we'll get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is take our colors for the body and we're going to condition it. So what that just means is we're going to roll it around in our hands like this um, and it's going to soften up. So when it sits in the wrapper, like I just got these out of the wrapper, fresh out of the box, they just harden up from sitting for so long. So when you squish it, roll it, that helps all of the um, hardness come out. So that's a nice little ball and I'll do it to the other one. I've already conditioned the accent colors that I laid out over here, the purple and the white. And if you need a little bit more time, just pause your video while you condition your clay. Um, take your time. You don't have to make yours look exactly like mine and you don't have to follow along exactly with me. Um, that's the great thing about video is you can go at your own pace. You can take a break, you can come back and be creative all on your own so that's what i love about art is you get to um, make all those little decisions along the way that make it uniquely yours so once you get your pieces rolled out one's a little bit bigger than the other and that's fine i just wanted to have orange as my main color for the body and red as the accents i will start to roll it back and forth in my hand so that ball will become a worm or a snake and if you watched some of these videos you've probably seen me mix clay together so i'm going to make two coils and i'm just rolling it on my table so of course i have a clean surface a clean hard surface to work on this is like a counter so nothing is going to stick to it and then i'll do the same for the red roll it in my hands once it gets as wide as my hands, I can move it to the table and you can also just start it at the table and they don't have to be the same length. So here's my orange. Um, my red might be a little bit shorter since I have less, I mean, my red might be a little bit shorter than the orange, um, but they might be the same. It's all good. We're just going to mix them. So they are not the same. Red's actually a little bit longer and I'm just going to start to twist. So you can hold one end steady and twist the other, or you can twist in opposite directions. So one goes clockwise and one goes counterclockwise and it starts to make this cool little swirl shape. And then you'll just ball it up. This is just getting our colors distributed, mixed together, and then I'll roll it back into a ball. You can roll it on the table if that's more comfortable and if your clay is conditioned it should respond pretty well and then i can start to roll it back out so just like we did before we make a ball then roll it in our hands and move to the table to start to make that coil 
I'll move our extra clay over just a little bit. And then to swirl even more, you can do the same step again, where you hold with one side, twist with the other, and it starts to go like a candy cane for you. And you can twist it as much as you want. Eventually, if you keep doing this, you'll have a brand new color. But we want to, or at least I want to, have both of my colors showing. So I will kind of pretzel this up and then roll it together. And that will make it as mixed as I want it to be. So I can still see both colors. Um, they look cool, don't they? I can still see my red, I can still see my orange, but they are definitely marbled together. So you can do that step one more time if it's not as mixed as you want. And this one, it looks like I just did it one time. You know, I'm not sure if I made this, I can't really remember. I feel like maybe one of my kids made this one. So we'll say that Annabelle or Claire made that one. So they look like they did it, they did the mixing process once, I did it twice. And if you do it a couple more times, then you'll have a brand new color. So that's really up to you. And you can do it with, you know, three colors. You can do it with more than two. So here we go. What we wanna do next is make a carrot shape. So carrots are fat on one end and thin on the other. So you could call it tapered or carrot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll it between my hands just like we did, but my hands will be open at the top and then close together at the bottom. So when you roll it back a few times, it starts to make it thinner down here, but keep it thick up here. So I'm gonna do that a little bit more. Can reposition it as needed. So the more you do it, the longer it will get. So this will help determine how long your seahorse is. And so this is going to end up being the head and this will be the tail. And you can just watch while I make this before you start on here so you can see what you need to do and then pause your video. So this again is the head, this is the tail. I'm gonna have the tail curl a little bit. So I'm gonna really get tight over here. You can move it to the table if you want to. Um, you can use two hands to keep one side from flopping too much. And this is about where I want to be. So for the bottom, you can take it and you can swirl it, you can curl it just by taking the tip, tucking it over, and then gently pulling it up. And so I showed at the beginning of this video um, some footage of the seahorses at the aquarium. So you can look at that and see how they hold their tails. They sort of wrap it around the things in the tank. Sometimes they're to the side, sometimes they're to the front, sometimes they're to the back. It's really up to you how you want that to face and how you want it to shape. So once you get that done, we're gonna come up here and we're gonna to start to pull out the head. So you can see the head's a totally different shape over here. Kind of looks like a horse. They look like a horse, so I'm just going to start squeezing. So just a little bit of a squeeze is going to send the Palmer clay this direction. So I'm squeezing on the side and then I'm squeezing top and underneath the chin just to start to form that horse-shaped head. And some of them have more pronounced noses than others. So that's really where your creative, um, your creative interpretation can come into play, how much you want to squeeze this nose. But you can see I am not just pinching a tiny little bit for the nose. I am pulling a lot of this top of the carrot to turn into the head and shape the head. So we're gonna leave that there for now. You can always come back and pinch this a little bit more. But seahorses, they sort of have this like curvy body. So to help curve it, we're gonna work on shaping the belly. If you are still working on the head, then you just keep doing that, pause your video, or watch while you keep working. So I'm just squeezing the belly. I'm not squeezing it flat. This is a really, really gentle freeze. I mean, squeeze, not freeze and it brings out the belly and really starts to make it look lifelike and takes gets us away from that straight carrot tapered shape into a very elegant looking seahorse so if you want to make this come 
out a little bit more, you can. It's up to you how you want the snows to look. And then seahorses often have little decorations going on here. And so what you can do for that is just come with your fingers and squeeze. So again, I'm not doing like a tiny little squeeze. We're gonna pronounce these a little bit more in a minute, but I'm getting a good half of my fingers worth in there and squeezing it up to start to give it this really cool um, shape on the head. And then after you do that, you can take your toothpick and define that to really make it pop all the way down as far as you want to go. And if you don't have a separate color for the eyes, you could always use your toothpick and you can even bring some of this fun shaping down the nose a little bit. So that has really changed a lot, right? From that initial seahorse shape that initial carrot shape into a real looking seahorse. So I'm gonna set this down and we need to make a little fin. So I could have saved some of this to make a fin, but I didn't. So I'm going to get a purple over here. I could make more, but we're gonna do a purple fin. So I'm just going to pinch off a little tiny bit and I'm gonna make two because we're gonna have a fin in the front and a fin in the back. We don't want it to overwhelm the body. So you want to make sure that you're using a small amount. And since I'm gonna use this clay for a few spots and for the eye color, I'm going to make sure that I have enough to do that. So just setting a little bit of extra aside and shaping these to a good size. If you have a roller, you can roll them a little bit. I have a roller right here. It's not great because it's metal, but it works, but you can use your hands all the same. And if your clay ever gets stuck to the table, you can use this to release it. Okay. So this is going to go right here, but before I put it on, I want to make it look very real. So I'm going to add some little marks here and then some lines so toothpicks are really great to add lines and then that makes it look a whole lot more like a fin you would find on a seahorse so then I'm just gonna come and press it on across from his cute little belly his or her cute little belly then if you lose your lines you can put them back and then the trick is when you go to the other side, not to smush the first part that you did. So I'm gonna add it really gently on the opposite side. Get my lines. Again, don't rush. Just take your time. Okay. I think that's about even. You wanna make sure it's opposite. So I just gave it a squeeze like this to make sure they're on and not about to fall off. Then I'll lay this down nice and gentle like. And okay, now for eyes. If your hands are yucky, you don't wanna touch the white. I think that mine are okay. I have some like scrappy white over here so I can touch on the scrap white to make sure I don't have anything left on my hands. And I'm gonna cut this in half. I probably have more than I need. Um, so maybe in half again, that will be extra. And then roll a circle, make it flat, and let's try it on. What do you think? Is that too big, too little? Maybe just a little bit smaller. It seems like when you flatten them, they just get a lot bigger than you would think. So I'm gonna roll. And flatten and then put it on here. Just kind of 
kind of press it down. And then you can do whatever color you want. Let's see how the purple looks. You can do whatever color you want for the middle of the eye, but it really makes it come to life. The eyes do. See? Now, it's a seahorse that can see. So of course, we wanna do the back, or the opposite side. So I have my circle. Let's flip this. Get it lined up with the other side. Get me a little bit of purple. You see that white kind of stuck to his tail that's why you always want to try to work nice and clean so you don't accidentally get something on there so look at that you can see and then we have all this leftover purple and so you can use that purple for design sometimes they do want to stick to your fingers um, so you can place it with a toothpick if you have a problem with it wanting to stick to you. Some polymer clays are a lot stickier than others. So for the spots, that is totally your call. And um, like this one, it's just got a couple spots underneath the eyes on both sides and they don't have to match. Um, you know, both sides can be kind of different and that is fun. So I'm just gonna play with it, add some little spots and this will be done. Of course, you fire it in, or not really fire it, you cook it in your oven according to the directions um, that came with your polymer clay. Mine bakes at 275 for a piece this size. I would probably, I will probably do about 30 minutes. So, can't wait see what you did. I'm going to play with this a little bit more and he will be done. Bye. Okay, you did it. You made a seahorse and I'm sure it is gorgeous and unique and creative and I'm so excited um, that you joined me today and learned something new. I hope um, if you do want to add the little eye hook, you would just find the middle of the top and just slide it in really gently. If it's too long, you can get a grown up to help trim it. And then you will just fire it, cook it like this, and then pull it out when it's done, add a little glue, and then pop it right back in that hole that you made. So I hope that you have an amazing summer and enjoy creating um, seahorses and many other things. So please take a minute to like and subscribe to my channel and leave me comments with how it went for you and what you'd like to see next. See you later. Bye. Can I go back to the touching tanks? Sure.